ST4 looks great. Man, you know, I think I thought ST3 looked great. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm glad to see, I'm really glad to see those numbers like you're up 50%. Yeah, looking really good. I'm like, wow. Yeah, that's and good stuff. When uh, Tony Afusa said that this morning, and he's kind of paired it with the, uh, you know, Jeff Ray. Is it a direct relationship? I mean, I know you guys have done other stuff too. You like, you got great software in place, you've yeah. done the marketing, but did SolidWorks jumping off the bridge? Uh, um, I could I could draw a direct correlation there. I'm sure we get a, I mean, we get a certain amount of business in SolidWorks, you know, people defecting. Um, but I would say largely it's due to asynchronous technology mm -hmm. and the fact that people are starting to get it a little more yeah. and B, uh, the focus on the business. This forming of the business unit two years ago is now you know, uh, providing benefits. With the synchronous technology people getting it, do you think it's, do you think it's like, oh, they think it's direct edit like uh, space claim or do they really buy in what you're selling about the, uh, about, uh, uh, marrying together the history based and the and the direct. Well I think marrying the history based and the direct is, is a very good thing, but I'm not sure that's what that's what sounds like. Um, I think it is the synchronous technology itself. Adding the um, live rules and, and the live rules and all that. That it's more than just direct it's not just direct editing, right? It's not uh, just a basic tool for casual users, that whole thing, right? It's every production stuff. Um, but I think it is the main mainstream synchronous stuff that people are, are getting. And I see it you know, I see a list of wins come in, mm -hmm. and there'll be a, you know, one this company, and this company, and this company, and what was the reason? And the reason almost always is synchronous technology. That's great. Now, are these are these uh, new customers, or 2D users, or former uh, Pro-E or SolidWorks users? A little bit of both. I mean, I think um, you find, you know, somebody who's using 3D today is already getting a lot of 3D benefit. Those are harder to convert. Mm -hmm. uh, and then maybe uh, they know history based, and so, you know, it takes a little more eye opening sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, but we get our fair share of those. Yeah. Uh, but we still get a lot of customers coming from 2D. Uh, and people say that's, you know, drying up. But it certainly depends on the geography. Some geographies, it's more 3D to 3D. Yeah. And some geographies, we're just going gangbusters in 2D to 3D. Yeah, that, there's a lot of people out there that are still just 2D. Absolutely. Uh, now, uh, are you guys going to get distracted by uh, architecture? Oh, I see. Uh, that's a, a leading question because you notice that SolidWorks. <laughs> no, I don't think so. What we do, though, see is we have a fair number of customers who are in sort of the plant equipment space. Yeah. And so they say, well, I do mechanical stuff, but it's got a lot of piping, it's got a lot of frame, and okay, that's great. And we're, we did a lot of work in SD3 on that, and that's definitely a good space for us. But um, as far as walls and the whole thing, like I've seen on the YouTube demo, not really our work. Really. Okay. And, uh, and you, already ha you already fielded a question on the cloud. Uh, you're going to take a more practical approach to it. I'm assuming that uh, Tony this morning said, we like cloud. Can, can you tell me what he meant by that? I don't know what Tony meant by I'm not going to put words in Tony's mouth. Um, okay. I, I really don't. Um, <laughs> is that... I, I, I think what we can say about the cloud is that we are very interested in the cloud and we have activities going on uh, evaluating the cloud. Um, on all of our products, uh, and by activities I mean and it, that activity could be just you know, understanding the cloud and, and is there an application for it. But that's, you know, to, at this point, that's all we can say. There's nothing that we can talk about that is an, a, uh, a live project that uh, or you know, anything we're getting ready to announce. It is something that we, we take very seriously and we're evaluating very seriously. Uh, and, where, and where there's a good commercial application that makes sense for the business, then right. that's when we'll start talking about it. So uh, we were talking a little bit about the, the PLM versus CAD uh, <coughs> dichotomy, but uh, this morning, I mean, I had a bit of an eye opening, I think, uh, when I saw all the stuff that NX does. I mean, it's just it's just jaw drop dropping what it does, and when you when you put uh, you know Team Center on top right, of right. that, it's just you know, pe oh, I'm like, oh, people really do need this. That's kind what of enter stuff. enterprise cat is, right? Yeah, saw right. Before. And and I can see, um, I can see cloud fitting right into that. But you, you talk about the SMBs, and do do you think that there's a difference in in how 
cloud fits between you know enterprise and SMB? I think a lot of things are different between enterprise and SMB, right? So I think we just have to see what what's the value to the SMB customer. There's a there's clearly a lot of benefits to cloud to to vendors. Oh yeah, um, oh, clearly. Yeah. And then the question is, what's the benefit to the end user? Right. And then for us, it's mostly what's the benefit to the end user of using SMB. Right. And uh, you know, we have fairly large enterprise customers ourselves, but clearly our focus is a smaller guys. And um, you know, you could see things. I could clearly see things like, uh, and I'm not saying we're working on this or anything, but farming out rendering. You know, to a big oh, yeah. rendering farm. Oh yeah. Oh, that makes perfect sense. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, rendering um, and FEA, big FEA, big FEA, big, big FEA job makes perfect sense. Right? Yeah. Uh, and then it gets murkier as you as you get in yeah. closer to your core. Okay, design. good. I'm, now you, you made kind of some disparaging comments about it's nothing you can render up and doesn't look real pretty and it's not real sexy. But if you're going to take on SolidWorks and do it seriously, you're going to have to clobber uh, product design, consumer products. Yeah. NX has the tools. You guys have. I mean. It wouldn't be that much that you'd have to borrow. No, I think it's just, and it's not so much borrowing, it's a decision to really go after consumer per se. And that's, you know, it's a decision we could make, but it's not our, our main focus right now, right? We're machine redesign, that's our main focus. We did a, a good bit of consumer back in V14 and V15. And the thing about it is, it has to be an entire business strategy. Like, we did a bunch of really good tools, but our reseller channel wasn't a consumer product reseller channel. So, you have to do the whole thing, and so you, you know you, can, you have to decide whether that's what you want. Do you do you think that you can you can catch SolidWorks if you don't move into kind of in that? Well, it depends what you know. What does what does catch mean, and what do you want? To do? I, I my goal would be to be number one in machine design. That would be my very first goal, right? And to be number one in machine design because synchronous technology is just so much better that people just say, well, I'm going to buy that instead. And I'd be happy to concede a bunch of consumer products you know, for a period of time. Right? And there's, you know, you got you to work your way on, on focus things. And if we go into a bit of machine design and a bit of consumer products and all, then we won't do anything well. I mean, we're very confident in consumer products. It's just not as focused. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm sure you read the blog post I did on, on surfacing. And yeah, it was, um, you know, Solid Edge does a good job. It has some tools, I think, that are, that are actually ahead of what Solid Edge does. Right, right. I, I, I remember that, and yeah. it's true. I mean, it, it's a thing where, you know, maybe not across the board, but in certain areas we invested and we really did a, a redo in that, and it's really good. Yeah. Uh, and could we do a redo across the board? I think that's just a strategic decision. I don't want to make a decision that says we're going to go do consumer products and then not have a full blown strategy. It's something we want to do. I think um, right now we want machinery design to just be the best. Okay. Uh, what do you think is the best possible outcome of stripping out the kernel? Well, I, I, I guess I don't want to comment particularly on SolidWorks and what they're doing. Okay. What I can comment on is changing out the kernel and what that means. Because I've done that. And in fact, we're the only people who've ever done that. So Solid Edge, for a variety of reasons, had the ACES kernel to begin with, from V1 through V4. And then we changed to the Parasol kernel, independent, actually, of the uh, acquisition. And in doing so, I mean, the only way you can change out the kernel is you want the history tree to recompute, because you want to maintain the history tree. So that means that you need to, every step of the recipe has to be able to get exactly the same answer in the new kernel as in the other kernel. And if any step out of your thousands in that particular history tree has any slight difference, then you get a different answer out the bottom. You know this, we all know this, right? And the differences between kernels are, there's a lot of them and they're subtle. You know, silhouettes run right to left, or they run left to right, or when I do this round, you know this if you do a lot of consumer, I do this round, in parasolid it might create three patches, and in ACES or whatever else, it might create two or whatever, right? Well, now there's a bunch of topology that depends on that. Now what happens, right? So there's a lot of unknowns. So we spent a lot of time when we did that kernel change, and we got it to about 95% reliability. And the blessing at the time of that being V4, and you know, customers numbering the hundreds or thousands, not in the tens of thousands, and millions of files, and all that. And 95% is really hard. Is that 95% of the features in one part, or 95% of the parts were perfect? 
95% of the parts came through with their history tree intact. And the other 5%, you had to bring the body across. And that was it. And your history tree was gone. And at the time, that was considered acceptable for the number of customers we had. So now, if we were today to do a kernel change with tens of thousands of customers and millions of vials, there's going to be a lot of data lost. That's 